Yeah, it's it's great. The Dan and I were, were talking a little bit earlier today. You know, he he um, uh, we wanted to talk to you guys about the way too early schedule prediction because everyone's high on the Buffalo Bills. Everyone's high on their record. Everyone's high on what the, they may do in the East. A lot of people have them winning the East already. A lot of people have them going to uh, divisional round. A lot of people have them going to the Super Bowl. This is as Dan said. Uh, if you guys listen to his. Um, if you guys seen his episode with me on it uh, a few days ago, he talked about that this is the window. This is the Super Bowl window for the Buffalo Bills. So we need to try to, or the Buffalo Bills need to try to, you know, take full advantage of this. So Dan is here to give you guys the way too early schedule prediction for the Buffalo Bills. And uh, I've been very vocal about what I've said uh, about the Buffalo Bills. I've probably gotten some hate mail because of that. Dan has his his takes, and we're going to go team by team and break down uh, certain guys to look for, certain guys that got added in this offseason, certain guys that may, I don't know, may get drafted. But the bottom line is this. What you should take from this is that we were both in agreement that the Bills are running the gauntlet as well as the rest of the AFC East having to play the AFC and NFC West and a lot of teams that had success in 2019 along with that. Dan, first and foremost, how are you doing tonight, bud? Oh, hey, man, I am doing just swell. I'm about <laughs> as swell as anybody could be during this uh, day at home action. And I'm just, you know, happy that I'm able to make content and do what I love to do. Like with me personally, like my biggest thing is the fact that my barber has been closed and I always wait for like the last minute to get a haircut. And unfortunately, the last minute was like a day before that all these restrictions came on. So Jaboy is probably going to have a man bun by the time this whole thing's over. <laughs> Take the hat off, Dan. Show okay. the people. Show that. Show the nation the flow, man. I, show the flock. You got dude. the Hold flow, on. man. Look at that. Uh... You guys know why I always wear a hat on Hashtag Nation because I cannot replicate that. I'm too old. I can't do it. <laughs> oh, no, 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 dude. Like, I, mean, like, I like have, you know, like these like reddish blonde locks that I've been doing with for a while. But I mean, what can you do? Phenomenal. You do? Ladies and gentlemen of Hashtag Nation, we're going to break down um, the schedule for you. I mean, we already know who the opponents are. We know if the Buffalo Bills are playing at home or away against certain opponents. Um Keep in mind, too, in 2019, the furthest the Buffalo Bills traveled was Dallas before the, the playoff game in Houston. That was the furthest west they traveled. So playing both AFC and NFC West, which rarely happens, uh, is something the Buffalo Bills are going to have to do and have to contend with in 2020 if there is a season. I know there's a lot of people back and forth on that. But um, let's just run through the gauntlet. Let's take care of the East first. I think that would be the easiest got thing, it. Dan, uh, because, the, you know, let's obviously they got six games in the East. Uh I'm curious about your take on how the Buffalo Bills handle the AFC East this year. Like we were just talking about on my video on my channel, I think that um, our division is going to be the least of our concerns. Um, so I have the Buffalo Bills going five and one in the division at this point. And that one loss is most likely not what a lot of people are going to predict. I think that we are going to uh, clean house with the Pats. We are going to get that, you know, revenge that has been building up for the past damn 20 years. And we're about to go Ralphie from a Christmas story on Bill Belichick and the New England Patriots I love it. Uh, in 2020. We're going to win both of those games. I can, I can almost guarantee you that. Um, the Jets, I know that um, you like what they're doing. Well, like like you said, that their talent circumvents um, uh, the coaching, yeah. complete joke of a front office, <laughs> and like, and so the coaching staff that they have. Yeah. I think that we're going to end up taking both of those from the Jets, but I think that I think that the Dolphins are going to take at least one from us during the season, most likely during uh, when we go down to Miami, mm. just based off of like all the moves that they have made for their defense. Like their defense is completely different from oh, yeah. like, that 2019 and it shows. Yeah. The, the Buffalo Bills, I mean, <clears throat> for the most part, the Buffalo Bills and Josh Allen have enjoyed the most of their success uh, against the Miami Dolphins. In some of the games that he's played, we, we, we saw the conclusion of 2018, uh, how he accounted for five touchdowns. We talked about the, the, you know, the, the amount of times he's been able to run and score and do things against the Miami Dolphins has been very successful over the past two years. This is a different, this is a different team now. And Brian, uh, you know, Flores, 
um, has been doing very, very well down there with Miami. They've acquired some guys. I can't believe what they're spending on their cornerbacks. It's just it's absurd to me that they're spending as much money as they are on the back end. But when you when you're in a when you're in a conference that has the Kansas City Chiefs, you have to try to stop that offense with Mahomes, uh, which is which is so explosive. So I have them. I have the Buffalo Bills actually going four and two in the division, and I have them losing to two teams that you don't have them losing to. So, hmm, okay. uh, you get you get all your flavors here at hashtag Sports, ladies and gentlemen. I have them losing to the Jets because I always think there's just that, there's just that one game against the Jets. I mean, you got to think about it this way. Yeah. In the conclusion, <clears throat> if the, if the Buffalo Bills actually brought their starters against the Jets this past season in the final game of the year, they would have beat them. I mean, you agree with that? They would have beat them. And so the Jets would have still beat us? No, no, no. Do you think the Buffalo it, Bills would have beat oh, them? Yeah. Went eleven and five if they played all their starters. One hundred and ten percent. Yeah, I, th- I, I think they would have. But I mean, there's always that one game that they sneak in, and I think, and I, I, I agree with Brandon Bean on this when he said in his presser last week, he was like, "Listen, you know what? Until somebody knocks the Patriots off that perch, they're still the team to beat." And I, I have, I heavily agree with that. And I think the mystique of the Patriots, if the Buffalo Bills get them early enough. I think they might still steal one from the Buffalo Bills, but I have them sweeping Miami. Even though you yeah. said, you know, all the, all the additions that they had, you know, Byron Jones, Kyle Van Noy, Shaq Lawson. If there's anybody we know how to beat, it's Shaq Lawson. It's, it's Shaqy. Yeah, it's Shaq. <laughs> Big Shaq. Um, so it, it's it's going to be interesting to see that. But I have the Buffalo Bills going four and two. You have them going five and one. So that that sets the precedent. We we both got ten games left for the Buffalo Bills to play. And uh, do you want to tackle the AFC West first or the NFC West first? You know, let's go on ahead. Let's uh, save the elephant in the room for uh, the end of the video. And let's go on ahead. Let's dive into the AFC West. Okay, the AFC West. So if I'm taking a look at my uh, my schedule here, they play at Denver and at Vegas. They're playing mm-hmm. at Denver and at Vegas. So they're home games against the AFC West uh, is going to be Kansas City and the Chargers. So they got the got Kansas it. City Chiefs coming home. You got the Chargers coming uh, home. Um, Chiefs, Chargers, at Vegas, at Denver. I think, personal standpoint, before you go, I think they're at they're playing away at the two weaker teams. Yeah, I really want to say they're that's, playing. That's Vegas and Denver. The Vegas and Denver. I think those are the two weaker teams in the division. Personal preference. Don't 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 kill me on this. But I think the Chargers. Uh, as far as defensively, I think their back end is probably might rival the Buffalo Bills. Their their back four, they're so impressive. Let me just pull up the while you, while you're talking, Dan. While you go, um, I pick any of those four teams you want to go. I want to look at the defensive backfield of of L. A. One more time because I think it's just so impressive. Uh, Got it. Got it. All right. So um, since we're on L. A. Right. So I mean, like while you're doing that research on the Chargers itself. Um, and obviously we do have their head coach did come from the Buffalo Bills from the Rex Ryan tree. Let's put it that way. <laughs> and then now we just so happen to be going up against um, our former quarterback who a small percentage of Buffalo Bills fans are s- still upset that we ended up letting walk. As yep. far as the LA Chargers are concerned, um, I really have the Bills taking this game. Number one, because it is a new era. I, um, I am – not scared of Tyrod Taylor. I think that Austin Eckler, um, as far as like the running back scheme is concerned, I think that he was a one hit wonder in 2019. I think the reason that he was so effective was the fact that NFL teams had zero tape on the guy and they had no idea how to prepare for him. And, and obviously we still have, you know, some of those scary weapons, you know, with Mike Williams and then Keenan Allen as well. But I, really see the Buffalo Bills defense showing out in this game and being able to shut down that offense. And I could honestly see that the Buffalo Bills are going to run away with that matchup against the Chargers. Okay. Yeah. The the back end that I was uh, alluding to is a K. So you got Casey Hayward, Rayshon Jenkins, Derwin James, and Chris Harris, uh, unrestricted. It's, it's amazing how many guys switch, uh, teams in that division to try to play against that division. I mean, the hatred and the rivalry in the AFC West is so real. Chris Harris coming over from Denver, uh, trying to come there. You talk about Melvin Gordon going to Denver. Yeah. Um, 
it, it's amazing the rivalries you have. And the guys you talked about also, uh, I just wanted to add two more names to it, uh, Brian Balaga and uh, Tri, uh, Tri, I think it's Trey Turner. Uh, also come in there to bolster that offensive line as well as the uh, the franchise tag of Hunter Henry. Uh, you talk about Joey Bosa and Melvin Ingram. Those guys are just freaks on the outside. I, I'm just yeah. – I'm, I'm tempering my expectations as far as the, the Chargers go. But I, I'll also, because it's being a home game, because they have to travel all the way across the, you know, the United States, I know it's – for some people, it doesn't mean anything. For some people, it's actually a factor. But I think if that's a one o'clock game, and they have to come over, you know, and you know, do all that kind of stuff, I think the Buffalo yeah. Bills will take that game as well. I have them winning that game sure. as well. But the other home game, which everyone and you and I are gonna have to temper our expectations, and you know, you with the Don Mafia, us with Hashtag Nation, Mahomes versus Allen, it's yeah. it's gonna happen. I mean, we, it is. We, we, that whole week, we're going to get beat up, Dan. I just know it. We're going to get pulverized. We're going to be get beat up that week. And if Kansas City wins, which yeah. I have them, I actually have them beating the Bills at New Me Era too. Field on that. Me too. That following week, I might abandon YouTube. I'm not even lying because everyone's going to be talking about, see, Don't we told you. We told you they should have drafted Mahomes yeah. instead of you know, so, But uh, I, I'm interested how you feel that game is going to turn out. Yeah. So, like, I mean, like, you know me as the guy that has those uh, super optimistic titles of my YouTube videos during <laughs> um, the season where I will say that the Bills are about to annihilate, destroy, whatever synonym that you could think of. Um, <laughs> That is not going to happen that week. I am definitely not going to make a title of my video that. Um, I mean, really, with the Chiefs, man, like they are the Super Bowl contenders. And granted that they only have $177 in cap space, probably about like 42 cheeseburgers uh, for their head coach at this point. Um, their, their offense is just absolutely scary. In my opinion, they have the best quarterback in the entire NFL in Patrick Mahomes. And while I know that we are going to expect a bunch of Bill's Twitter, you know, like Bill's social media being like, hey, we should have drafted Pat Mahomes. Like, yeah, dude, great. You know, like, let's just throw up an application for you to be the GM. Like, you clearly would have killed it. <laughs> um, realistically, the Chiefs, I don't see them taking any type of step back in 2020. They're still going to be the team to beat in the AFC. And while it is home, and while I don't think that it's going to be a blowout, because I think if there's any defense that the Chiefs will face in 2020, um, I think that the Bills are going to give them a run for their money. But I do see this being a loss, unfortunately. I, I, I do see it as a loss, but I don't like I, I, I agree with you in the fact that I don't think it's going to be a blowout. I think it's going to be a great litmus test for this defense. Uh, this may be a game uh, that could be flexed. Uh, I, depending on what time of season it is, what, what's going on with yeah. both teams at the time, uh, if the Buffalo Bill, if this is later in the year, uh, it could be something where the Buffalo Bills are like, okay, we're gonna, this is gonna be a Monday night game because we want to see these two guys at work, you know, Mahomes and Allen. Um, it, it could be, you know, Sunday night flex game, which you know we, we all experienced this past season. But um, <clears throat> you want to talk about a draw? You want to talk about two teams that? Uh, have a lot of history. I mean, you talk about McDermott, who worked for Reed. You talking about, uh, you know, Buffalo Bills trading out and getting Tre'Davious White and the resources to get Edmonds and Allen the following year for Patrick Mahomes. I mean, I don't, I don't think the reason why I think that always that narrative always comes up is the fact that okay, you have to think of it this way: Would you take Tre'Davious White, Tremaine Edmonds, and Josh Allen for Patrick Mahomes? Keeping in mind, Andy Reid's not coming here. So Mahomes sure. would be here without, without Reed, without Kelsey, without Hill, without uh, at the time Hunt. Now he's got Williams. You know he's got all those guys there. That's the thing. That's yeah. the narrative that always got me was the fact that he wasn't bringing Kansas City here. That wasn't no, happening. Not at all. So and so with that being said, dude, like Patrick Mahomes would not have been the same quarterback if we were to draft him mm -mm. like back in the day. Like I mean, 100%. like first off. So we went to Kansas City, who already has an offensive-minded coach. Patrick Mahomes would not be the same quarterback in Buffalo. Like that's facts. Like right there, one hundred and ten percent. Yeah, I don't. I don't think. So I mean, it's 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 interesting because 
we really need to get an idea of what the Buffalo Bills offense is going to be in 2020. Obviously, we have a bunch of shiny new toys. We have three receivers who are absolute studs in separation. In my opinion, uh, the number one trait that you need to look for in the NFL when it comes to a wide receiver. So, I mean, at the end of the day, it's going to be put on Josh Allen's shoulders. Because you know that no matter what team we're going to be playing, we're not going to be seeing the same QB pressure that we have been seeing for the past two years since we have added Stephon Diggs to this offense. But as optimistic as I am that we could potentially pull it off, shock the world, I mean, I'm just sticking to my guns at this point and saying that that is going to be one of our losses. <laughs> yeah. I, I think a lot of people would, would have that same narrative on paper right now. If you had to put those two teams in, in a stadium and have them play, I, I think it would be a highly contested game. I think it would be such a chess match of, of, the, the familiarity, like I said, between Reed and McDermott, they know each other. They coach on the same staff. There's going to be, you know, um, there's going to be holes and gaps where they're going to try to uh, expose everyone else. So, um, so I'm so I'm I'm pumped to see that game. Like I'm excited to see that game, but I just think that the Buffalo Bills, not I just want to say not yet. You know, but they haven't been in enough yeah. of those pressure games to do. I mean, you talk about Patrick Mahomes, who has played in the last two years in both AFC Championship games. One he lost, one he won. So he already has that big game feel a lot more times than than Josh Allen does. And I think that's going to be the key that, that puts him over the edge, as well as the uh, the factor of Andy Reid and that offense. So, uh, so all sure. right, if you're keeping track at home, Dan had him going 5-1 and one in the division. We both picked uh, one game in the AFC West. He has them at six and two currently. I have them at five and three. Dan, I gotta tell you, both away games, both at Vegas and Denver, I got them sweeping. I got them. I got them beating both those teams. You got them. Me too. You got them winning those two. Mm -hmm. Okay. Me too. Okay, so I got you at eight and two. I'm writing this down so I, I keep a record. So I got them at uh, now seven and three. You got them at eight and two. Good. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, for one of the gauntlets of the West, I mean, obviously Denver with Vic Fangio there and then and their staff, they just got Melvin Gordon. Obviously it's intriguing, but I don't think the level of the other two teams that we talked about as far as LA and Kansas city, as far as that goes and, and um, Vegas, I don't know. They just seem, they just seem too Jekyll and Hyde for me to be any kind to develop any kind of consistency to, to be a fundamentally sound team like the bills. So I'm going to have them beating Vegas as well. So sure. uh, the non uh, the non-divisional games, but the teams they have to play, and as many as you know, uh, the Buffalo Bills, they're already playing the AFC West. They're already playing, obviously, their division, the AFC East. They have to play one team from the from the AFC South and one team from the AFC North that finish in the same placement that they did. So those teams are actually Pittsburgh and Tennessee. I mean, mm -hmm. we already have a history with, with Pittsburgh. We, we we took over Renegade down there at their stadium last year, but we got them at home now. And then we also have to once again go to Tennessee. So um, starting with Pittsburgh, let's we'll start with Pittsburgh and then go to Tennessee. How do you have them? How do you have those two games playing out? Got it. Got it. So as far as the – so as far as the Tennessee Titans are concerned, I think that the Tennessee Titans got lucky. Sorry <laughs> if I cuss there. <laughs> you can just edit that out. No, my bad. As far as the Titans are concerned, I honestly think that they got lucky as hell in the 2019 season. I really think that um, Mr. Tannehill is about to do the exact same thing that he did once he ended up getting that massive payday from the Miami Dolphins in the following year. Uh, he would show his true colors. I don't have faith in Tannehill. I really don't. And I think that that's exactly going to be the Tennessee Titans demise. Now, don't get me wrong. That Titans secondary is still absolutely incredible. Mm -hmm. I know that we still have um, that, that running back with Derrick Henry, but in 2019, when we went up against the Titans, we really gave him a run for his money. I'm not sure based off, based off of like the stats, but I'm pretty sure that we ended up holding Derrick Henry to one of his worst games throughout the entire 2019 season. Mm -hmm. And I don't see that happening. And I see that happening once again, I see us actually going into Nashville and I see us coming up and winning this game. But with that being said, unfortunately I see the Pittsburgh Steelers coming out and winning the game against Buffalo at home. I know a bunch of fans are about to be super upset about this scenario, 
But just based off of what several mock drafts are starting to project of what they're going to pick, I think they had the Steelers like grabbing like Henry Ruggs or like one of like the big receivers, yeah. one of the big boys yeah. coming into it. Um, I think the Steelers are going to give us a run for our money, and I think that is going to be yet another loss, which I think brings me to uh, you're at nine and three, three losses. Yeah, you're at nine, nine and three. three. Yep. 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 So I, uh, it's so interesting too because I actually have them splitting against those two teams well as well, but I have them losing the away game at Tennessee. Interesting, uh, you know, because you know it's hard to put one year against another, but this is the way too early. The draft didn't even happen yet, so I mean we're making uh, we're making these predictions. We're kind of going on a lot of things that happened. They beat the Tennessee Titans fourteen to seven last year before they went on their run, before their line could get it, before they could gel, before they they knew what their identity was as a team. Now that they know that identity, and you know Tannehill being the X factor, like you said, his contract could be the deterrent in that locker room of what goes on. Because I mean, remember we played against Mariota. Um, so this team, that, that team was still able to go at, uh, they've only upgraded. I mean, they, for the defensive side of the ball, they ended up getting Vic Beasley to pair with that secondary who, uh, at the time didn't perform very well against Buffalo Bills, but you know, remember the Buffalo Bills only scored 14 points in that game. So yeah. I actually have them losing that game at Tennessee because there's always, uh, I just think there's such a psychological effect that comes with a team that has to seek revenge on you. The, t- the, the, the fan base of Tennessee was embarrassed, even though they won that online thing that they paid for. Uh, but they, they got outshone by the Buffalo Bills fans in their own town. I think they're going to come out in drones. They're going to they're going to try to dominate the game. They're going to try to dominate the sound of the game. I just have Tennessee stealing stealing one. Even though they were in the AFC Championship game last year, I'm going to say that they're going to steal one from Buffalo Bills. But I see the Bills handling business over whatever quarterback, Ben Roethlisberger, Duck Hodges, Duck Duck Goose, whoever the hell is their quarterback that comes up. Whoever the hell comes up to Pittsburgh, I have them handling business. That's the split that I have. So I currently have the Buffalo Bills as we go into the elephant in the room, as you say. I have them at 8-4 and going over to the West, and you have them at uh, 9-3 currently. So so now we're going to go. They're playing – at Arizona and at San Francisco, and they're home against Seattle and the Rams. So both L.A. teams actually come to Buffalo, which is good, which is good. So uh, let's start with um, I'll start with San Francisco, the defending Super Bowl rep- representative of the NFC. How do you see that game playing out? And so that defense is just too damn good, man. <laughs> they are very, very good. That Nick Bosa is just an animal. He is a once-in-a-lifetime type player. Um, as far as San Francisco's defense is concerned, while I don't see this being a high scoring game, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be surprised if this is the lowest scoring game throughout the entire season, something like a 10 and seven, maybe a 14 and seven, 14 to 10. Um, but unfortunately I do have this marked down as another loss for the Buffalo bills against the Niners, just based off of, um, that team, like really like minus Emmanuel Sanders, I mean, the Niners have basically the exact same team back. They ended up finding it. They they ended up finding another deal for Matt Barreda, and then they have Mostert as well as their two running backs in the backfield. While I think that Garoppolo is a little bit overrated, I still think that I could see San Francisco coming up with the W in that one. It's tough. That's got, that's gonna be a tough one. Look, I, I'm just looking at this. I mean, Eric Armstead, first round pick. Solomon Thomas, first round pick. Nick Bosa, first round pick. Jimmy Ward, first round pick. You know, I mean, you look at that defense, and it's it's disgusting. It's it's absolutely like D Ford. You know, who they acquired last year. It's just Quan Alexander. I mean, you that defense is terrifying, and honestly, if it were home, I may have a little bit better argument, but being in San Francisco, tra- I mean, the same reason that I said, you know, the L.A. Chargers traveling to Buffalo, I'm going to say Buffalo traveling all the way to the West Coast, trying to go out there um, to San Francisco. I just think it's going to be a, a tough sledding for them. I have them losing that game as well. Um, you know, so you got them at 9-4. and four. I got them at uh, – how did I – how do you have them at 9-4 and four and I'm only – oh, I got them at 8-5. and five. I'm sorry. I'm about to say, how did I have 13 games and you didn't? Okay, so uh, that being said, the other um, the other away game that the Buffalo Bills play is at Arizona. Uh, right. High powered offense just got upgraded because of Hopkins getting traded there, which was the trade that I, I still don't believe happened. Um, who do you have, who do you got winning that game and why? 
So this is it. Um, so I think that this is going to be um, a one victory from the NFC West, and that is going to be against the Cardinals itself. Like I said, we have a high-powered ass offense that that we're going to be facing against the Cardinals. But I have so much faith in Trey White being able to cover DeAndre Hopkins during this point. Yes. And then of course you have Larry Fitzgerald. You have Christian. What's his last name? Kirk. Kirk as well like i mean like they like have like a very good receiving core right then and there but then again like i mean like you're still going up against a uh second year quarterback and kyler murray and while we've had conversations before you know like when you see a coach like bill belichick he goes up against you know like these young quarterbacks as well yep. i mean i always like to have the argument and like sean mcdermott knows what the hell he's doing as well and he can actually shut down these young quarterbacks and like make it happen yep. while i think it's going to be close i see the buffalo bills making it happen and pulling off the dub. I got I got the Bills winning this game as well. Um so you run the you run the Bills record to ten and four. I have them at nine and five at the current point. Obviously we gotta mention the other elephant in the room, the fact that Jordan Phillips is now the defensive tackle over there. Um yeah. it, you just look at it on paper and it just like you said, you got Fitzgerald, Hopkins, Kirk, Isabella, Hakeem Butler. Those two guys were drafted last year at the wide receiver position. This is a team that's gonna want to throw the ball and want to throw the ball all the time. And uh that that could and could not play in, in in the hands of Buffalo Bills. I have them actually winning this game because of, uh, you know, uh, I know the, the familiarity that they have at Hopkins. Uh, putting him on the other side of Fitzgerald, if you asked me five years ago, I would have said that they've been the most unstoppable duo in history. But obviously Fitzgerald is a little bit older. He's still, you still have to account for him. I don't care. For sure. Uh, but as far as the defensive side of the ball, I think Buffalo is going to find cracks in that defense in order to, um, in order to score points and put up points, even at Arizona, I, I just just once I just want to go to practice and see DeAndre Hopkins against Patrick Peterson like the whole day. That's all I yeah. want to talk. That's a, that's the only reason I would sure. be an Arizona fan is to watch that every day. So, yeah. all right, so we got two more games left on the slate. We have the LA Rams and the Seattle Seahawks. You currently have the Buffalo Bills at ten and four. I currently have the Bills at nine and five. They got both of these games at home now. They got the Rams and the Seahawks at home. Uh, who do you want to go with first? Do you want to go with Seattle first? Yeah, let's go for Seattle because gotcha. that's where the bad news comes in. Oh, boy. This isn't good. That's where, <laughs> that's, that's where the bad news comes in right then and there. Um, so the Seattle Seahawks, man, you know, like, I mean, like you really can't get away with what they're doing up in Seattle. In my opinion, I think the Seattle Seahawks are going to win the, the NFC West next year. Okay. I really do. I think that we're going to see a decline – in the San Francisco 49ers, unfortunately, not against the Bills. We're not going to be able to like take advantage of that decline. Yep. I think we're still going to lose that one. But I think the Seattle Seahawks are going to be the team to beat in the NFC West next year in the 2020 season. I mean, like you look at like their defense, obviously, like there's like been reports going around that Clowney is going to end up going back to Seattle because oh, like he's boy. had like zero interest moving forward with that. Um, can never count out Russell Wilson. I love their running back. I love their running back and Chris Carson. He absolutely killed it for me in fantasy last year. And then, of course, you have DK Metcalf, who is – say that he follows that same trajectory that he followed in 2019. He's about to be an absolute stud. And then you go on ahead, and then you account for the fact that you also have that Tyler Lockett and then that – amazing quarterback that Russell Wilson is I'm seeing the Seahawks being a loss yeah unfortunately and I mean you know a lot of these teams it's like the ghost of Christmas past coming up on the Buffalo Bills we already talked about Mahomes early in our episode you talk about DK Metcalf a lot of people wanted him a lot of people yeah. in Buffalo wanted the, the Buffalo Bills to draft him as well uh you know they they go and then they get Philip Dorsett from New England and now they have Greg Olson as well so you're just yeah. giving Wilson weapons um Obviously, we're very high on the Buffalo Bills defense. We think they could they could thwart that type of uh, of an offensive attack. However, uh, I I just see too many weapons for and to a season the team to season the team as the Seattle Seahawks are. Uh, I have them coming in New Era Field and taking that game as well. So, uh, with one game left to go, I have the Buffalo Bills currently at nine and six. You have the Buffalo Bills at ten and five with the Rams mm -hmm. coming into town. You said you already gave us the bad news, so give us the good news now. All right. Well, the good news is, is that I see the Los Angeles Rams finishing in the basement in the NFC West. I think that they are going to 
finally see uh, their mismanagement in their front office by sending away all of their first round picks for the past like <laughs> 10 years looking forward. I think this is going to be the beginning of uh, the decline of, of the Los Angeles Rams being absolutely terrible for the foreseeable future, especially since they ended up letting Todd Gurley ended up walking away. Um, you have a Jared Goff who um, has really come off a very disappointing season. Um, I honestly see the Buffalo Bills going up against and absolutely shutting them down offensively right against our defense itself. I think that the Bills are going to win this game through our defense alone, and I just foresee us finishing out the season 11-5 and five with that final win being against the Rams. Okay. I mean, I got, I, I can understand it. I, like I said, um, and I just want to really quick preemptive say that I, this isn't in any specific order. I don't, I don't think it's, the, I don't think it's the last game of the season. Obviously teams always play their, their division yeah. the last game of the season. But um, I, for the same reason, I said that Vegas would be such a Jekyll and Hyde team. I feel that the Western representative of Jekyll and Hyde is going to be the Rams. And you know what? There's always that one game a season where, you know what? It's not your day today, man. It's just not your day. And with the with Jalen Ramsey playing corner, you got Aaron Donald up front. They added a couple new pieces here and there. They did lose a couple pieces. I just think that that one stinker game that may happen, and, and you know what? I, I agree with you in the fact that I don't see the Rams competing in the NFC West up as much as the other teams. I just think that the Buffalo Bills just come out flat. Things things don't go their way. Uh, certain things end up bouncing the way that they don't want it to. Even though I agree with you that the defense could win this game by themselves if they wanted to, I just I just see them coming out flat. And I, whenever this game is, whenever this game is, even though it is an, an LA team coming over to the East Coast, I just think it's one of those games where there's always one a year where it's like it's not your day today, man. It's just not For your sure. day. And you know what? Unfortunately. Uh, I mean, for the Buffalo Bills, it was the first game of the season versus the Jets. You know, they had all those turnovers. They still up winning 17 to 16, but it, 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 they didn't seem crisp. They didn't seem good. They didn't seem like they were uh, like on top of everything. So they were able to pull out a win in that respect. I just see them not winning the game against the Rams this year. I know I've just made so many enemies. But in the final analysis, at 11 and 5, where you have the Bills, I have the Bills at 9 and 7, do you have them winning the division? Yes. Okay. 110%. Because I do as well. Because of that gauntlet, because of everything we talked about today, I think that nine and seven is good enough to win the AFC East next year. I really do. I hundred percent. I hundred percent believe that. So, for sure, ladies and gentlemen, go down in the description. I'm sure you are already, but if you haven't uh, subscribed to Dan's channel, his links and everything will be in the description. You can go follow him. He has great content coming out every day, all day. Just excellent content uh he's talking about so many different things about the buffalo bills that you need to hear and you need to see we are fortunate enough to have him here on hashtag sports and devoting his time and we want to thank him for that so from hashtag nation bills mafia the don mafia this is hashtag sports dan thank you for joining us tonight buddy thanks man